Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Fast Break here for Ice Wolf Radio. On tonight's show, we'll discuss the firings of two coaches, one at the bottom of the East and one at the top of the East. We'll discuss the firing of Adrian Griffin, the Milwaukee Bucks. We question a lot of things that led up to his, that decision. On the other side of things, the Washington Wizards fired Wes Unsell Jr. We discuss what was the point of that firing if your team's in a rebuild situation. Plus, we talk about last day's game between the Warriors and Lakers. Has Draymond really changed after counseling? Talk a little bit of college basketball, plus all the news and scores around the NBA in college and prep. This is Fast Break, live on Ice Sports Radio, your direct feed for all your sports, and you're welcome to join us. And join us as you shout tonight, ladies and gentlemen, lots to talk about, especially lots to talk about here tonight. Uh, we welcome y'all here on Championship Weekend in the NFL. The Chiefs are going back to the Super Bowl. So that means Taylor Swift and her people will be watching the Super Bowl. That's probably what the NFL hope for before Travis and Taylor's break up in the spring. But anyways, I get ahead of myself. Um, so the Chiefs won, and the Lions are beating the 49ers pretty well, right now, going to the half. But thank y'all for tuning in with us tonight. Lots to talk about, lots to get into. D-Lock, how are you tonight, sir? Uh, I'm doing pretty good, man. Um, definitely watching this championship uh, day. Uh, watching a few places. I'm actually back home now. Uh, the Chiefs look like the Chiefs. And the Lions are looking to go to their first Super Bowl, man. So, We'll see what happens, but you know, even with that being said, uh, NBA is still going on. Uh, I imagine definitely have a game today as well. Yes, lots and lots and lots of going on in the NBA. And usually we you hop on the scores going on today, all that stuff. But I think some bigger news that happened this past week kind of overrides that. To a point. Like real quick going on the scores going on for today. The Atlanta Hawks are up in the Raptors 114-108. Uh Scotty Barnes so far has 16 points for the Raptors. Gary Trent uh, 13 off the bench. Uh Nawara, who's down uh, on the uh, on the floor right now, 24 points for him right now. Yeah, eight rebounds for him. Uh, for the Hawks side of things, uh, Bogdanovich, 24 points. Trey Young, 24 points as well. Granted, one for one for four for three point land. Uh, Capella, 18 and 12. But no uh, Deontay Murray tonight, which is uh, kind of interesting. So. That that score, your Orlando Magic up four on the um, Phoenix Suns. Devin Booker, who's been on like a scoring run here recently, four three points. A real eater. Oh yes, he's he's been on fire. Fifteen points for Durant, racing out eight points so far for your Magic. Twenty two points for Panchero. 14 for Markel Fultz. So, and if uh, Bo Watner, 14 and 11 for him as well. Uh, real quick on Yolando Magic in this game right, right here. With Devin Booker's uh, scoring run that he's had this past week, and with about six minutes left in this game, what should they, how should they, you know, Try to slow him down to come away with his victory. 
with this hot shooting. Uh, you gotta get, make sure you get uh, two people on him. I mean, he's starting; he's in that rhythm, and to get him out of that rhythm or to make it a little bit inconsistent, you gotta have bodies at him. And you know, Orlando has, excuse me, they have the players that you know that they can come in, and they have the longer, longer guards that can impact that. So, I hope to see more Wagner, or actually. Um, not Mo Wagner, I'm sorry. You got Ben Carroll, you got Franz Wagner, who can come there, make an impact. Um, Gary Harris is actually been out, but I like Anthony Black to make an impact as well. Uh, so now I'll get these defenders and throw them at him. I mean, like I said, he already been on the heater uh, for a while. We've seen hell of players so far recently put up 60 plus points in the last few days. Um, so uh, and he's putting up four to four with having a Bradley Bill and a Kevin Durant there. <laughs> so, um, you know, my suggestion would be to use those guards. Um, you know, Jonathan Isaac, who's played 19 minutes already, which is probably hell the most he's played in a long time. Um, you know, even though he is that forward, we need to slow down that best guy for Phoenix right now. That, and that's Devin Book, who's been on the heater. So throw these guys at him, you know, and, uh, and this is what Phoenix wanted to put together with the three, the trio that they have around the good Devin Book and, and Kevin Durant is when one catches fire, uh, you put so much attention to them that either Bradley Bill or Kevin Durant or Devin Book can go, go off if one is already, you know, going for 30 or 40. So, yes, give that attention to Devin Booker, but now that's going to leave more room and more shots for Bradley Bill and the Kevin Durant. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. It's like, can it, some of the young guys right now kind of can they slow them down just a little bit? Like Wagner, you know, if if you get like pick and roll situations with Booker, if you got Isaac out there, who I see is, who's out there in the lineup right now, can you be a good pick and roll defender to kind of slow him down? Use that length, use that seven foot length. To kind of disrupt his shot, we know we know great scores. They can find a way to get their shot and all that, regardless. But sometimes, you know, can you slow the dude down enough? Can you frustrate him uh, just enough to, uh, you know, disrupt his flow? But we'll circle back to this game and see how it finishes out uh, here in a little bit. Want to shout out to the chat real quick. Shout out to the chat, Jim B, Karen Rodriguez. How you doing tonight, sir? Shout out to our brother Drewski in the chat as well. We'll get to Luca here a little bit. Luca had a big scoring uh, day uh, this past week as well. Scoring the hell out of the ball, despite Kyrie being out. But regardless, Luca having a career high for the Mavs. We'll discuss that here momentarily. Oh, we'll get that game a little bit, uh, Mr. Rodriguez, like it's worse. But we got some coaching stuff to discuss, d -Lock. This past week, we've seen one of the top teams in the NBA, the Milwaukee Bucks, fired a head coach. And one of the worst teams in the NBA fired their head coach, the Washington Wizards. Now, if you follow us on X and Twitter, we kind of discussed, you know, it's kind of like, what the hell was going on? On one side of things, you know, you got one of the worst teams in the league, and that's somewhat understandable why you made for our coach there and that, uh, on that. But... You're not going anywhere, so what's the point firing a man? And on the other side of things, you got one of the top teams in the East and maybe the NBA. But it seemed like a lot of discussions is talked about his coaching style. D Lock, let's discuss the bigger one first. The Milwaukee Bucks. When that news first happened, 
what was your reaction, uh, reaction, quick reaction to it? And what you think about the firing and the, some of the responses you hear from the media and stuff like that? What's your response to Adrian Griffin being let go from his job? Well, my first thought process was why. Um, I wanted to know what was the purpose behind it because, uh, you know, usually when we see, uh, you know, firings, especially when we see firing, let's say, midway through the season, um, we're probably seeing a team that is looking bad, um, looking terrible. The record is not where it's supposed to be. Players are complaining. Uh, things all over the place. But that wasn't the case for this team. You talk about a team that's first in their division. Um, you know, they just made a huge trade to go get uh, Damian Lillard, uh, <clears throat> which was a big deal. And we knew what the difference was going to be with them. Uh, we haven't seen this team go on a major, major losing streak. Um, you know, to where they lost six, seven games, I think the, lo- the most they've lost in a row with, what, like two games or something like that. Uh, so they haven't had uh, that loss of chemistry for the players uh, or not reaching the expectations. Uh, <clears throat> um, so for me, it kind of had me shocked. Because I'm thinking like, well, hell, like he, I mean, right now the record is 32 and 14. You know, you're looking like one of the better teams uh, in the East. Uh, I, hell, and even in the NBA, uh, basically neck and neck, or well, a couple games behind Boston, but hell, neck and neck with them, uh, with the first number one and number two spot. Um, you know, with a three, I think about three or four game lead ahead of Philly. Uh, what was the reason? You know. I mean, we talked about it before and we discussed it over the week, but like it still has me kind of wondering. Um, now, the biggest thing, too, we know, you know how important Dame is or more likely Giannis is to this team. Uh, Giannis is a player that if he speaks about something, you know, his decision means a lot in the front office. So um, – I said it and said if they wanted to keep him, if he wanted to keep Adrian Griffin, I believe they would have kept him. So uh, there's a lot that still need to be answered regarding this. I mean, it still makes me kind of think about uh, what is the reasoning uh, for this. And like I said, I think that the biggest deal is – now that you have a new coach in Doc Rivers, you know, we've heard, hell, we talked about Terry Stotts, who I've already told you I feel about his ass. I've been told you I feel about him. So <laughs> that guy, I mean, I just, you know, nothing personal. I just seen what was going on in Portland, and nah, he ain't that dude. So, uh, you know, whispers about him as well. Uh, but at this point, um, like I said, I think that you know, there's more to this story, a lot more to this story. Uh, but that was the biggest, that was very shocking to me. And I just, you know, heard multiple things. I led to believe it had something to do with, you know, Giannis's brother, um, you know, possibly maybe not being on the team or getting minutes reduced or whatever the case may be. Uh, but just to see the interview that Giannis had, you know, after when I talked about it, it just didn't give me that. Uh, good feeling that he was okay with. It, it, it didn't give me the feeling that he didn't have. He didn't have like he wasn't warned about this, you know. Um, and like I said, he's not only the top player on the team, but he's on top player in the league. So he says something that makes a difference, and we know that by you know him letting them know, hey, I want to be a contender. So do something about it, or I may leave. And they go make the move for Dane. So they did that for a player that he wanted. I'm pretty sure coaching wise, they probably did something very similar. So, uh, but it was definitely shocking, man. I mean, for me, 
And, you know, I just am still kind of trying to figure more information, which will continue to leak. Uh, it's the reason why um, this happened. My first initial thought was like, okay, you're top of the league, you're winning. But I don't know, something, I, I don't know, things didn't work out. I don't, it's just like, you won't leave a situation like that. But it's just like, you see Chris Saints talking the other day on uh, TNT, and we all know Chris Haynes is like a uh, vessel for Damian Lillard because him and Lillard are tight. So you hear him talking, saying like, you know, things were working out and defensively and stuff like that. And I, I, and that's a key word right there, defensively, because everybody, the, the players always seem to be about what he's been doing defensively, how to, he did things. And from what I read and what I saw, it's like he kind of changed things up what they did defensively previously what Mike Boonehorse did. You know, still okay. Using Brooke Lopez, for example. Brooke Lopez, I guess, you know, is too lazy to play pick and roll basketball. So they prefer to have Brooke Lopez prefers to have to play drop down. Instead of playing high and stuff like that to cover that way, all that stuff. And, you know, at times it worked, but sometimes it don't. And some of the video I saw was like, yeah, sometimes it's affected when he drops down the paint and stuff like that. But let's be real about this. Brooke Lopez ain't that. He wasn't that, never really that good defensively. Ever since he entered the league, let's be real about that. I and mean, sometimes, you gotta be honest with yourself. I know I'm saying you gotta put guys in the right position to succeed defensively. I get that. But if a guy was never a good defender for the jump street, don't act like he's trying. He is one. And he is now. Brooke Lopez, my age. You know, his best, you know, youth that youth and stuff is like behind him. And to say this guy is like this great defender, you're mistaking yourself. And then You trade Drew Holloway, Holloway, Drew Holloway away, Holiday away for Damian Lillard. At the time we discussed that trade, D Lock. Okay. Sometimes you kind of reach a max at a point with the current live and maybe shake up things, shake up things. But if you trade, you trade away one thing for another, Drew's great defensively, one of the better defensive players in the league. You trade from this uh, for this uh, very great offensive player. There are sacrifices, sacrifices there. We do that type of move, and that's what you sacrifice your defense at the point of attack. And that's exactly what happened there. They ain't been never known for a a, a defensive mind. He has never been that. And him using Chris Haynes as a vessel to, to display that, it's like, come on, dog. Would you ever, nobody ever considered you a defensive, or at least a half ass defensive player. Not nobody ever. Dane's great in big moments. He can win you games and stuff like that. 
But let's not act like he's this all round player. Let, let's, let's stop that. So that's two guys, D Lock, right there. I kind of pointed out, I was like, this is why your defensive rating is low. Then, besides trading Drew Holloway, you trade right Grayson Allen, who's pretty solid defensively. Trading him away, so you take that away. In this place, you put Malik Beasley there, who's not known for his defense either. So that's three guys right there. Javon Carter left in free agency to Chicago. A bad, not a bad guy to have uh, back up uh, defensively. Bobby Porter's have his moments here and there, but sometimes he's too erratic, you know, at times in his play. And he can get mad and all that stuff, all that. And he's like a ticket time on me, to be honest with you. Then I bring another player up, Chris Middleton. For the past couple of years, D Lock, Chris Middleton has been dealing with some knee issues. And at times, he has not really looked his best. Now, if you're not looking your best, you ain't going to play great ball all the time. And then, and look where the, um, and, and, and look where we at now with Chris Middleton. Giannis is Giannis. I think he's going to play hard to paint regardless. There's no, I don't take nothing away from him. But then you look at the bench D-lock. Pat Connaughton. Kind of, you know, his hype kind of died down here. And after Connaughton and Portis, you, you know, you got guys like Cameron Payne and stuff like that. What, what were you looking at in that roster? So, to me, like Shaq said, on the day that fire happened, when they talked about it, something else is going on. It was going on that led to that firing. You know, I saw I read a report that that the GMs and stuff they came down to watch the practice, and they was kind of mortified what was going on in the practice. And the GM, the Bucks, really didn't kind of specify why. When asked, he kind of skirted over it. If you're mortifying stuff like that, go on and speak the truth. Tell us what you saw. Tell us what you didn't like about the practice that you so mortified that you had to make a change. And then, to crew the bra to all of this, D-Lock, it's like, I read, reading this article from uh, clutchpoints.com from, by Jackson Stone. I'm reading this article here. The Bucks initially hired Griffin back in June of 2023, months before the team ultimately dis- uh, decided to trade for star point guard Damian Lillard. Now, more lights being shed on how that high profile acquisition changed the outlook on the Bucks after retaining to Griffin himself. It was explained to me that when Gri- they hired Adrian Griffin, they didn't know at the time. Remember, this is the hire of June 2023. They didn't know if they were going to bring back Chris Middleton. He was going to be a free agent. He had the option. They didn't know if Brooke Lopez was going to re-sign. They didn't know what Giannis was going to do. And what you brought up to this uh Discussion about the extension on that stuff. So they brought Adrian Griffin into a, a situation of unknown, and they're going to just kind of ride it out and see what happens. 
but getting Dane kind of changed things to like a hurry up, hurry up and now type of situation. And that's why I put on Twitter, like, this is why I've asked, if you're a fan of the Bucks, you got to question ownership and, and management. Why are you doing this higher if you still had championship aspirations? You still had Giannis there, one of the better players in the league. You will always have championship aspirations. That the at the hiring Adrian Griffin, calm a rookie coach, all that stuff, it's kind of a cop out for other things going on. It's BS. Fine, get rid of bone horse and fine, whatever. But if you still want to try to contend, you show try to peace, be honest, you get a veteran coach. If Giannis bought that uh, Nick Nurse, okay, pivot to somebody else who's still out there. There's a lot of damn retreads out in the NBA. But just the bet they made itself in and they lied in them. I'll bring you in. What you think? I mean, to me, like I said, I feel like you have somebody like a Giannis make a decision or speak up about wanting to be contending and you bring a player in. Why would I think that's not the same thing when they come to coaching? So when you make a big move like that, you know, it, it makes me, not just me, but a lot of fans, I'm sure, want to know, okay, what's really going on? You know, because obviously any athlete or player don't want to see him like the guy that got somebody fired. <laughs> Nobody wants to have that on their name. But at the same time, I mean, do you want to be that guy that brought in another superstar? And if so, then, you know, that gives you the – thought process of, hey, you can't have one without the other. So, for me, I just, it's making me wonder, you know, what is the, uh, what really happened, what's really going on? Because I'm looking at everything on this team, and I'm like, you brought in the superstar. You have the second best record in the East. Like, what is the issue? Hell, it hasn't even been the season yet. And this guy's gone. But there needs to be more. Um, and that's what makes it, to be honest, it makes it very tough for me because I'm trying to figure out what the hell is the the reason for this. Hell, I don't understand that Monty Williams got fired more than then Adrian Griffin Gip- 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 getting fired over this. Yes. I mean, and and that's my my situation. My 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 problem with this is, you know, there's no there's no definite answer. You know, it makes you think: was it something in, in personal that happened? Like, what's the wow? Yeah, we missed. Them. It has to be something that, you know, we haven't uh, heard too much about. And, you know, Yana's brother, Thanis, 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 I can't say his name correct, uh, per, correctly, uh, being the one that has been trending and hearing some things about it, it just kind of makes you wonder. So uh, for me, you, know, you get a, you make a change. Uh, like you said, you, you know, well, we go to get a different coach, and possibly Doc Rivers could have been somebody saying, "Hey, well, this is what I would do, or this should be happening, or whatever." Like, you know, what is the what is the deal with this? Like, what is you know what is going on? Um, so I listen. This this doesn't happen. Uh, 
this doesn't happen without Giannis's consent in my mind. Hey, you know what? Before we made this, this before, hey, just want to let you know, we're going to let Adrian Griffin go. And I feel like if Giannis would have been like, hell no, or nah, why? Things are going well. I think we're fine. Now, there's a debate with that. And, you know, you, maybe we see different results. But for uh, to go how it went and then seeing Giannis's conference in response to it, it's just mind-blowing, man. So, again, I think, you know, hopefully by next Sunday, now obviously we're in a good part of the season, so there's things happening a lot in the NBA. So this is not going to be the the only thing that that uh that happens for the next seven days. Hell, the Jonathan Murray might be a Laker next week. Um, so with different things happening, obviously this won't be the only uh thing we'll talk about. Um, but hopefully we get more information on it because you know right now it it this kind of leaving me still in the question. Okay, what the hell is going on? We ain't got you know the coach. And then Doc Rivers comes out and says he wouldn't wish this on anybody. Like, and like you said, hell, they're talking about Terry Stott. Like, what the hell is, what is this? Um, not only all of this, but this is happening to a team that is contending for the, for the NBA Finals. Not a team at the bottom like the Pistons or the Wizards, who we'll talk about. This is happening to a team that it's probably going to have either the number one or number two seed. With two superstars, might I add. So, and Chris Middleton, like you said, he's been hurt for a while. He's been very inconsistent. They got to figure this shit out, man. Because you got these superstars. Don't, listen, don't let this team drop off with a new coach now. Because now it's really going to look like something uh, was an issue. And then now, all of a sudden, after they, Adrian Griffin's gone, they got this video out with the Milwaukee Bucks are, are in a great mood <laughs> before they play. So, I mean, it, it, like I said, it's more to the story, something that we have to hear more about. And I am so uh, intrigued to figure out more information on this and discuss and one more point for me is like you brought Terry Stotts. But like I, I I see fans and stuff on Twitter and all that stuff saying, you know, Terry Scott Tots, he got there quick as he could, blah, 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 and all that. Come on. Terry Scott's is a fine coach, but it was not at like, you know, he's Chuck Daly or Phil Jackson or Red Allback. Come on now. That's, and Bucks right, fans, that, and Bucks fans, that dude was a head coach of your squad for a couple seasons back in the day. And how'd that go for y'all? Y'all seen it firsthand how he how how he coached all this stuff. And I understand that's a different time, all that stuff, but still, come on now. So to say, and I mean, we talked this before the show. If everybody was so revered, Terry Scott's on, Scott's on that stuff. Why don't we ask it? Has picked him up this year as the coach. You know, let's be real about that. Why don't we ask his picked him up as to be his coach somewhere? Assistant at that. Maybe now, now just defending him. Maybe, you know, he told folks not, you know, hey, I'm going to just sit out this year, whatever. Possibly true, but still. Come on, man. Some of these fans trying to treat Terry Scott's like some martyr. Like, stop. Let's be real about this. I had to get that out of my chest. But 
kind of, but I want to talk about to the uh like why fans should question the GM and all that stuff, the ownership. Got Giannis in your roster. Yes, Giannis pressuring y'all to get things done, but it's like. You know, you do things to get better and all that stuff. Giannis is uh, giving this dude full of confidence. And we may never get the full story why Griffin may be gone. But Giannis, you put your stamp on this dude. You deserve some, you deserve some blame. You put your stamp on this dude. So you gotta take some blame for this. But if you're a Bucks fan, if you kind of read some of these stories that are coming out saying that they un were unsure about this team's future, you gotta start questioning them. Like, dang, we just won a championship not too long ago. Chris Middleton's been hurt. Blah 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 blah. What 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 exactly y'all guys doing? If Middleton is being hurt like this, you should have sold high on him last year. You knew Brook Lopez wasn't this great defender as these players trying to claim he is, or ain't, or they're not using him right. Should have just let him walk the free agency and got somebody else. I don't know at uh, uh, like free agents in front of me uh, this past summer, but you know, let's be real about that. This team has a lot of questions. Yeah, I mean, a lot of questions, and if you're sitting at the second team in the East, so. Uh, you know, we know what Bobby Portis can do and what he has done. Um, you know, and bringing back Bruce Lopez was a decision that they had to make. You know, what they had to sell, what they were going to do. So at this point, you know, you have to move and decide how you, uh, what you want to do with your franchise moving forward. There's a lot that needs to be done. Um, but having the key pieces that you have, uh, we talk about Bruno Lopez. They need to figure out what they can do with Chris Middleton because he's very inconsistent right now, and his health is a major concern. So going to get somebody like a Dame, you know, does take the pressure off of somebody like uh, Chris Middleton and others. But, hell, I mean, you know, Gian is talking about how he want to keep, continue to be uh, part of the winning program and continue to keep them winning. He needs to speak up about, you know, some of the pieces else on his roster as well. Because, I mean, maybe it's one reason why Adrian Griffin is gone because, hell, we being real, his brother's not doing too much help on that team either. He's a good support guy, cool. But I mean, he's not really making a huge, huge impact on his team, man. And that roster spot can go somewhere else. Because outside of the few guys that they do have, you know, the depth is what they're they're lacking. And when they run into a Boston who has the depth, it's going to be a major problem. You know, especially over a seven-game series. So these are things that they, you know, want to be competitive and all of these. Listen, I understand, you know, protecting and family is important. Uh, but, you know, you have to get some of these these people that are not really consistent, you know, and consider moving them. 
You know, it includes Dan, Dan Assist, or it includes Chris Middleton, possibly all these other options. You know, you have to put yourself team wise in the right position. And maybe that's what Adrian Griffin started to speak up about, which is why he's not the coach there anymore. So we'll put a bookmark on this right here because I think more things will come out. And just, you know, to say to Doc Rivers real quick, you know, to say, I mean, for him, he, he's got to win. It's like, he has had multiple stops with multiple all-stars. And he, he's only shown two finals trip to show for it. And those two finals trips were those when he's in his time in Boston. He has had stops in L.A. He had had stops in Philly. And now Milwaukee. He has coached multiple guys like MB, James Harden. Uh, who was I thinking about? Uh, Chris Paul, Blake Griffin, John G- uh, Jordan is prime. Had, he has had multiple guys, and he ain't got oh Jimmy Butler too. Got about that. Oh, that's Mike Brown. Excuse me, excuse me. That's Mike Brown. But he has coached a lot of guys, and things have just gone stagnant or whatever. Or he had these big playoff leads, and just kind of just like Ugh, choked. So. I think for him and his legacy, he's got to do a great job there because if he don't get done here, then you know his legacy gonna be just that oh wait Celtics championship and as we've seen over the past few years. They talk about that like that's the best team in the world. And it's like, eh, I don't know about that. But we'll, like I said, put a bookmark on this. Moving to other coaching news real quick, D-Lock. The Wizards fired West Unsailed of the Washington Wizards. Now, on the surface of things, D Lock, this firing, you you can you can say it's not a surprise, but it's just like you look at the scope of everything like that, it's like, what's the point? You try to get a high draft pick. You know, all that good stuff. Some fans complain about that. And some play, I mean, some fans come on happy about the firing saying, well, this dude. Blah, 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 I ain't doing this right, all that good stuff, blah, 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 blah. But I'm just looking like this, like, what y'all expect? D-Lock? Hell, uh, I mean, for real. I, I, what did you think about the firing? Because I, I didn't, what do you mean you didn't expect nothing for this Wizards team this year? What do you think of this firing in your words? I mean, to be honest, um, you know, this is not on the same level of Milwaukee because it's still, I guess, like, hell, yeah, y'all at the top of the East, you know, X, Y, and Z. And you're hitting the expectations that you expected. This team did not have any high expectations. I mean, we were not expecting this team to have super high expectations. So, in my mind, I'm like, well, like you asked me, you asked me, 
what would they expect? Like, well, hell, I, I mean, but they was expecting a, a, a damn NBA Finals run. And this guy, like, and this is a proof of another team that has no patience. You know, right now, you know that the plan of not having who you have on this team. And, you know, it makes sense to say, okay, cool, we know we're going to build. You know, they traded for Jordan Poole, X, Y, and Z. But at the same time, like, what was the point of moving somebody so quick? So, are they are, are they expecting to see another coach out there? Hell, do they plan on hiring Adrian Griffin? <laughs> like, I mean, something. So for me, um, and I'm thinking in my mind, hell, maybe they just firing somebody just for the, the hell of it. Uh, listen, if I'm, a, if I'm a coach. An NBA coach, I would love to have that opportunity, but then again, I'm not because clearly they're keeping their coaches that long. Um, you tell the coach what the plan is or the front office what the plan is, and the coach or the front office literally lets you go in the middle of your plan. More than likely, that job is probably going to be that job is probably going to be. Uh, Rotated a lot through. In my mind, I think it is because of just the fact that now you are hiring a new coach and there is no high expectations from this team. So what the hell is going to happen when there is high expectations? This is why teams that stay at the bottom of the barrel stay at the bottom of the barrel. You yep. make decisions like this. When you do things like this, your team does not have the time to improve. We are literally watching the Detroit Lions, who just let the 49ers tie the game up in an NFC championship. I'm 34 years old. I've never seen the Detroit Lions damn NBA championship, in NFC championship, I'm sorry, NFC championship game. Over time, we've seen the Detroit Lions Keep a coach for a little bit, then fire a coach. A coach come in, then they fire. A coach come in, then they fire. Then Campbell came in, the head coach of the Lions came in, and this is what we're going to do, X, Y, and Z. They gave him time. He started out bad, you know, a couple of years, started to build, started to draft. And now look what it, it has came to. The Lions are farther than they've ever been in their, career, in their franchise history. Why? Because the front office gave them him time to do that and gave him the pieces. I bring that full circle and come around and say the Washington Wizards are not doing that. Fire coach, knowing that there is no high expectations to be competitive in the East. So what's the plan next? Mid trip with Jordan Poole. Okay, cool. We knew when they traded for them that they were not going to do anything. They went got Ty Jones. We knew at this point this team is rebuilding. It was clear. It was obvious. And now, don't forget, they just had Bradley Bill. They had a few pieces and it didn't work. You trade Bradley Bill. You get pieces back. And that's a clear, we're rebuilding. And you fire your coach in the middle of that. Hell, not even in the middle. He didn't even finish a year. So in my mind, you know, I, I'm, I'm, and I'm thinking that it just, at this point, this is one of the teams that, you know, and I remember I talked about it with, um, I talked about it with my magic. My magic, like, you know, we are known for this. We get a guy, say, hey, you know what? We're going to bring him in. We want him to be our coach. He's going to rebuild. He's going to do this. And then that doesn't work. 
So, you know, I'm sorry. I think, you know, West Us has been there. I think it's been there for a few years. But it's the fact that they've been planning on rebuilding. And when you move a Bradley Bill, you're moving all these other pieces. You sign Kyle Kuzma. Got ties on the board. Pool. Give it some to build. And now, you want to get you a new coach. Because you're not top four in the East. <laughs> This is the reason why, like I said, SARS teams stay SARS because these type of decisions. So hopefully, again, um, these things can can change, but it's a head scratcher because they have no expectations, no high expectations, at least to my knowledge, unless maybe they were in the front office thinking. Kyle Kuzma's was going to be the MVP, and they were going to go to Game 7 against the Denver Nuggets in the NBA Finals. Who knows what the hell they thought. I hope not. But if so, then maybe this is the right move for them to fire somebody. But for what we talked about from our previews that we've discussed, from the day that we heard Jordan Poole get traded over there, from the day that we heard, we talked about Bradley Bill, why in the hell he hasn't left yet, and they finally traded him. It was clear it was a rebuild. Scratching my head, man. Real quick for me, uh, like I said, we discussed this on the previous show, our previous series. One of the things I pointed out, like for the scenes, like can Jordan Poole average like twenty five points on a bad team? That's kind of one of the main takeaways, and some in, in the development of some of the younger guys. That's really about it. We ain't come no high expectations. And I understand making a move sometimes, making a move, but it's like what Washington does is since the turn of this century, it just seems like it's been like bad decision after bad decision, all this stuff. The only thing they kind of really hit on this since the turn of the century. Is drafting Bradley Beal and John Wall and getting Michael Jordan to play for y'all too. But even with John Wall and Bradley Beal, it was it was like like lukewarm results that kind of turned cold into cold water after about like a couple minutes. And now you know you got this team. It's a flawed roster. You got a lot of mismatched pieces, all that stuff. The team's trying to move out to Northern Virginia and all that type of stuff. So you got that. You're trying to get away from that that DC fan base up out and trying to move up to the suburbs. So you got that going as well. It's just bad. It's just bad ownership. Bradley Beal is a solid, solid player, but let's be honest, he's not. He was not going to take it to the ship. John Wall never really developed into a very a great overall NBA player. That's why he's still sitting out in free agency right now. All that stuff. But, you know, the fire the guy, which, I don't know, it's just like, it's like, yeah, Kuzma's playing pretty decent, but, you know, he's not taking you nowhere. You know, I don't know what what they expected. You, you're not going to be Boston. You're not being Miami. You're not being Milwaukee, I mean, Milwaukee as well. Throwing Cleveland as well, who got Evan Mobley back in the lineup and all that. You, you're not beating at least those four squads. And then, top of that, you're not beating the Knicks as well. You're just not beating those. You're not, beating, you're not bearing those squads. So, I hate it for him because 
the poor roster structure for the past couple of years has been trash. And to be honest with you, they haven't sucked enough over the past couple of years to get a good player to develop, to be that franchise player. And look where they're at now. Jordan Poole has been kind of like disappointing in my eyes because he ain't really scored a ball like that, like I hope. They kind of iffy to trying to trade Kyle Kuzma because they want to keep him around for whatever reason. You know, they I think they can get some couple first round picks for him. Get Marvin Bagley, not a bad move. He's been playing pretty damn good. But this roster is just flawed as hell. Like going to that last game. Let me pull it up right quick. Now, granted, they beat Detroit. They, they ain't saying a lot, but you know, the game gets Detroit. 30 points for Kyle Kuzma, but he shot 13 for 27 for the field. That's a lot of damn shots right there. Three for 13 for three point land. Poole has 17 points. Gafford, 15 13. Bagley, 13 8. But you just look at this roster construction and who they got started and all that stuff. It's just like, what are we doing here? You know? You got uh, Johnny Davis on a G League assignment. Why are we doing that? You know, uh, the kid from France, you know, who I, I who I really like coming out of the draft. They start, you know, playing him more. That's good. Gil, not playing coach decision. The silly, the things like that. It's just kind of like, what are we doing? Now, tomorrow they play San Antonio. We'll see how that goes. Wimbania has been playing pretty damn good. So we'll see how that check it out for them. But it's just like, like you say, you know, we talked about it. We need to make much for this team. The fire coach, this fire coach is, is fine. But I think one thing they got to do, tread deadline wise, trade Kuzma, get some more first round picks out of it, and just go from there. And then hopefully come. Draft lottery time, you're in discussion for the top row one pick. I'll let you have the last word. I mean, they need to make up their mind on what they're trying to do. You know, are they just in it just to be an NBA team? Or what's the, what's the plan? What's the play? Because it's you got to get a new coach in. And what are you going to say to him? Hey, we want you to be our new coach. We like the vision that you have. Welcome to the Washington Wizards. Halfway through the season, you know what? We don't like how things are going. We're going to change directions. That doesn't get anywhere. That doesn't do anything. This team or franchise or front office needs to figure this out. And now, when you think about it, this is the reason why you've had Bradley Bill for so long and was not successful. This is the stuff that happens. When teams do stuff like this, it makes sense why they are not successful. So hopefully... We see something different. But at the same time, you know, you, what happens is when things like this happen, you kind of make it very tough for, um, you kind of make it very tough for coaches to want to take that job. Now, obviously, you got some, you know, young coaches come out, assistants uh, who want that opportunity. You know, yeah, they'll take it, but 
know, you get the season guys or the guys that been on teams contending for titles or contending for conference championships. You know, they don't want to take a job where it's not secure. So at the same time, this is something that uh, has to be the decision that things have to change. Um, I talk a lot about it with my Orlando Magic, even though right now we're looking like a better team in the East. You know, we draft somebody, get a quarterback, and it's like, oh, I'm sorry, not a quarterback. We get a, we get a player we want, and it's like, oh, okay, we look good for a couple of years. And the player says, hey, I want to, be, I want to get paid. Oh, well, no, nah, we're not going to pay. We'll let you go somewhere else. Or you get you a a coach, Frank Vogel. Get you a guy who can change you know, the franchise. Well, hey, it's not in time. We want to start over. It hadn't, it, didn't ha- it hadn't happened quick enough. We have to start over. That does not work. You know, right now, like I said, I use the example. We've seen the Detroit Lions be the sorriest team for years. Take the same mindset of let's just keep changing coaches. Let's get this person. They've been going under 500 hell for the longest. They're going to get a coach in and they buy into what he's trying to sell. And they're looking like a team that can be competitive. They're one of the top four teams in the NFL. Possibly two. They can find a way to win this game. So this notion that, hey, every time something is not going well, we need to start over or start from start from scratch again, I don't think that's a great idea. I think that, you know, sometimes buy into your system, into the code that you've hired, let things play out, and see what happens. And on top of that, you're in the East. Not in the West, where it's literally loaded even more now. Get you a couple good players, get you a coach there. You can be competitive big time, and we see that. So hopefully, like I said, this team can get it, get it together, especially in the front office. Uh, but that, that's going to play a huge part moving forward uh, for this team. I, I, I'll leave it at this. It's like, like you lose to, it's like restarting and starting again, restarting and starting again, restarting and starting again. You know, some people brought out like the Wiz- they never seen the Wizards win like 50 games in the, in the season. And this at times, like, they had like guys like Gilbert Renis, you know, that crew. In a, in a weak Eastern Conference. You know, what that tell you? So I, I don't know where the end game is for the Wizards, you know, for their fans, you know, especially the, that D.C. contingent. You know, it seems like You know, they trying to get away from a certain fan fan base, kind of like they did in uh, Atlanta with the Atlanta Braves. They moved from that downtown Atlanta area out to Cobb County, different demographic, and trying to, to appease a different base. I mean, baseball, yeah, you could do that, but basketball, that's kind of like a different story. And you know, it kind of sucks that if you you know, kind of suck for the rest of the year and you hit a couple of uh, draft picks and now you got success out in the suburbs and now you, you're, you're going to reap the benefits off that. It kind of sucks. So I, I don't don't know. You know, some people brought up like why Monty Williams never got fired and despite losing 20 plus games. Great question. But, you know, this contract kind of made, made it that way. But, you know, the way he's been coaching and stuff like that, he should be considered to be let go. You can't lose 26 games like that. So, before I uh, get off and get back to the scores real quick, 
do you foresee NBA else getting let go during this season? You know what? Uh, I mean, to me, I'm making quick, right? I was not expecting, you know, obviously, uh, Adrian Griffin was a sell either. Uh, I won't be anymore. I would be surprised, but the only one that would be a shock to me is Monty Williams. Man, they're playing terrible, man. Like, I know they just got that. They got a they did get a big upset, but come on, bro, six and forty. Um, and I got, I don't, like I said, I don't think it will, but I wouldn't be shocked if so. I mean, when you see what the hell the Wizards did again now, anything is, is like, wow, it is what it is. And now, um, you know, I, I feel like Monty Williams could, could be the one that could be next. Well, I wouldn't be shocked if he is. Uh, real quick for me, I think. Monty Williams may be in discussion, but I don't think it, it may not happen because of the contract, like I stated. And then um, I say keep an eye on Darby Ham. I know Judy Buss has, has come out and said, you know, it ain't going to happen. They're going to look at the situation, but you never know. Clifford from the Hornets, keep an eye on that. I'm, I know injuries. He might use injuries. But, well, I'd had Lamella at this point in season, Brandon Miller, you know, all that stuff. So, you know, keep that in mind. Quinn Snyder is somebody I'll look at as well. Because I thought, you know, they'd be, the Hawks would be better than what they are. It's like, ugh. And then Jock, Jock damn Bond. Got, um, he got our boy Cam Thomas back in the starting lineup, but. Yeah. He, him and Monty Williams, they're rotations. They just love certain players and they play them regardless. You know. This is true. This is like, like, what y'all doing? What, what y'all see in practice and then what, than us. So those guys, I'll, I'll say keep in mind. Steve Kerr. Ooh. I don't think he'll get let go, but that's somebody to keep an eye on for the rest of the year. Like, maybe we start letting hear some murmurs and stuff like that. Because this team has, take, has taken a dip, and you know, last night they lost, you know, to the Lakers in double OT. But just, you know, the way the development things have gone with him. And you got I, you got to keep an eye on that situation. And then plus, you got the Olympics coming up on that. And that's been here last year, you know, doing that, that deal. Yeah. And, and, uh, our brother Drewski, <laughs> our brother Drewski said, "You can add Jason Kidd to that list." <laughs> Man. I don't think J. I don't know. They got new ownership now in Dallas now, but I mean Cuban's still yeah. there, but. But. Ah, Jason Kidd. I don't know. It's like that job would be hot too, but that's a hot job. You know what? I'll give Jason Kidd one more year. He got he finally got a good center and lively down there. Granted, you know, well, Grant Williams has kind of been like a disappointment. His scoring has dropped off. Like each month, ever since he signed the team, Luca's Luca, Kyrie's Kyrie, 
Uh, I don't know. I, I'll give Kid one more year. I, I get what Drewski's thinking. It's like, it's like, damn. If he had somebody else kind of like else like things, I think we'd be like top two in the uh, West. I, I get what he's thinking. Um. Other than that, I think that's that's who I can think of who should be on the on the watch list. You know. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. I don't think they would do it, but Billy Donovan, Donovan, there should be a change there, but I don't think they I don't think they'd do it. Because like Bullsh like showed like signs of hope uh here for the past couple weeks. And I don't think yeah. and I don't think they'll make that change, but I think <clears throat> and plus the Bulls are knife now in the standings. So there's that. But other than that, I think think that that's about it on that department. Uh, going back to the scores real quick. Um, wow, you dropped that. Your Magic, uh, they defeated the Suns, uh, 113-98. Despite Devin Booker's 44 points, they win by double digits. Let me ask you this before we get out of here. We saw Carl Anthony Towns score 60 plus, plus points and they lose the game. Luca had uh, 73 points against the Hawks, but it wasn't by much. You know, they won by five. What do you make of all, you know, these high scoring games and stuff like that? But these teams are just winning by single digits or whatnot, or they're losing. By single digits, double digits. What are your thoughts on that? On these scoring feats and that stuff. That's giving you. It's giving me vibes that it'd be an ISO ball a lot. You know, you got these players that is strictly ISO and getting their points, but no defense. I mean, it just, it's a scoring fest, which is cool to have, you know, a lot of, I think it's good for the NBA. I think you did ask me about it. I think it's good for the NBA that you have, um, that you have so much scoring by players, you know, and B with 70, you know, Luka with 73, I think Carter Town with 62. I think that is very good because it's bringing in other, you know, these players, they're getting a lot more attention and showing what they can do. The range is different. You know, these guys are jacking up threes from all over the damn place. So I think it's really good, but um, it's showing you where a lot of these players are focusing on just themselves and not more so of a team ball, a team game. Um, and especially when it's, you know, like you said, we're talking about having a, player have so many points yet their next teammate is like a big drop from him like looking at uh Devin Booker's 44 the person that closest to him is Kevin Durant with 15 so can't just say oh this is just the magic playing great defense on Kevin Durant or Bradley Bill like I mean, man shot, 26 shots. And the closest person to Devin Booker with 26 shots, rather be with 13. So, you know, this is more so not necessarily calling plays. This is just more so iso ball. These guys are just getting the ball and playing, you know, backcourt basketball. And when you do that, you're taking more shots. Uh, you know, other teams tend to be closer. You know, they start to zero in, you know, on a Devin Booker. Like I said, 
we talked about that, what, 30, 40 minutes ago about Devin Booker. I think about six, seven minutes left in the fourth quarter. He had 44 points, and he ended with 44 points. So, again, um, again, I think it's good when you do see these players go for these numbers, um, but it may be bad for the teams overall. It kind of ties in to what we talked about earlier before we get off here. It kind of ties in earlier what we talked about earlier about the Bucks and their defense and stuff like that. The, the league has made it so much so changing the rules for offensively and all that stuff that for these offensive side of things that you kind of like strip naked of your defensive identity and stuff like that that the scoring feats will happen. Like, when some when players have big sc- scoring exposure like this, maybe like 15 years ago or so, or 20 years ago, you know, like Kobe against the Raptors, Kobe against the Mavs, you know, outscoring them in three quarters. Gilbert Arena is scoring 60-plus against the Lakers. You know, Shaq having his career high against the uh, Clippers on his birthday. You know, stuff like that, man. That's like big news at that time. Like big scoring feats. I mean, yeah, now these players are more skilled and whatnot. But look how the the rules have changed and whatnot to kind of favor them. And then on top of that, you know, some of these guys ain't winning games. These teams ain't winning games. Like we discussed, like, Booker at 44, and they lose by double digits. Carving Towns at 60 plus, and they lose. So I just like, you know, what's the point of all these scoring efforts and stuff like that? They try to help these offensive. And try to make the lead more happening scoring wise, and you know these guys only win. I'm just saying, it's like, hey, great, cool, Luca, you score seventy three points, but your team won by five. If you score seventy three points, man, you had to win by double digits at least. You know what I'm saying? This is my point of view. But I'll let you have last one before we get out of here. Yeah, I mean, I got to, I feel like, you know, this is the, you know, I've, NBA is going to get the attention, obviously, but when you see these players go for these enormous numbers, um, I think it's, it's, it's very big, uh, knowing what Kobe did against the Raptors. Uh, but I, I feel like, you know, it could hurt the team more than help. So, uh, but he damn sure won't see this in the playoffs at all. You know, one of the most amazing games I've seen was LeBron, I believe, game six, I think, or game five against the Boston Celtics. And he had 45. Um, and that was nowhere near 70. So, uh, for me, I feel like at this point, um, like I said, it's good for the, you know, see a few go for 60, 70. Uh, but if it's costing them to lose, Games, probably not smart. So we'll leave it on that note. Um, so we'll leave it on that note. Uh, thank you for tuning in with us tonight, ladies and gentlemen. A lot we ha- I know, I know the show tonight was kind of like a big discussion on the coaching change, but when you do a coaching change. With one of the top teams in the NBA, got a lot of questions there. Got a lot of questions there. But thank you for tuning in with us. Uh, shout out to the chat. Shout out to Larry B, the founder of IE Sports Rail. Thank you for tuning out with us tonight, sir. Terry Rodriguez, Jim B, our brother Drewski from Dallas. Thank y'all for tuning in with us tonight as well. Uh, d like how can people find you on social media? You guys find me at 
black dash eight one three on Twitter. Uh Instagram is D Lock eight one three. Let them know they can find it in the show page. Uh, you can find the social page on Twitter slash X at Fast Break IESR. That's Fast Break IESR. Uh, do follow us at IESportsRadio.com for all your latest shows, news, and uh, news and feeds. Uh, a lot of great shows in the network. Our our San Francisco 49 our um, channel is probably screaming and jumping around as their team is taking double digit lead here. Going to the fourth, so do uh, check out iSportsRadio.com for all your, for all that as well. Do follow me on my personal page, Spawn Forty Two Eighty Eight. That's Spawn Forty Two Eighty Eight. Also, I do know shot know someone inside called the Crooks Process. Uh, I, it's on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. You see the CP logo, CP logo there. I did drop a new episode here recently, talking about the Titans, co- Titans uh, coaching change. I'm working on a couple more episodes about Nick Saban and Vixman, man, all that crazy stuff. So do check out uh, the Crooks Process on Instagram, Facebook, and like I said, TikTok, while I talk, discuss these things. But until then, ladies and gentlemen, we'll talk to y'all next week. Hopefully no coaches get fired. And we got the tread deadline and all-star break coming up here soon. So we'll talk to y'all later. Peace. <laughs>